Gaming Bolt presents 15 shocking moments when you realized you were the bad guy all along. When you play a video game, it's only natural to assume that you are the good guy trying to save the world. However, sometimes video games can trick you into being more morally questionable. It's normally on the down low, and you may not even know it until the very end that you were the bad guy. Before we get into this countdown, as with any video like this, this will contain spoilers, so you have been warned. With that out of the way, let's talk about 15 shocking moments when you realize you were the bad guy all along. Near. If hack and slash games have taught us anything, it's that you talk with your weapon and never, ever ask questions to the opponent. They're just walking experience points to you. But in Nier, well, just know that each time you swing that weapon and kill what are called shades, you're killing what remains of humanity. That's right, you heard me. Nearing extinction about 1300 years ago, humanity made one final push to survive by separating their bodies and souls, and then created clones to later reconnect with the lost souls. However, over time, the clones had gained their own identities. It is then learned in the end that the protagonist had played as the clone form of the Shadow Lord, who was the primary antagonist and playable character in the first section of the game before the time skip. Mortal Kombat Deception No matter what Mortal Kombat game you play, you will instantly know who is good and who is bad. It's not that hard to figure out. That is unless you're playing Mortal Kombat Deception's Conquest Mode. In the Conquest Mode, you take control of Shu Jinko, a young man who longed to fight Shang Tsung. He was then tricked by an entity that claimed to be an agent tasked to find a strong and courageous mortal to obtain six mystic relics. It took him decades to find all of them. He then found out he was tricked by Onaga, the Dragon King. This caused Shujinko to go through a bout of guilt and then made a decision to go against Onaga. But you were technically a villain before that. After all, you were aiding the evil king of dragons even if you didn't know it. Kill Zone. After nuclear war made Earth nearly uninhabitable, humanity went to a new world known as Vecta, a world that is similar to Earth, named after the founder of a conglomerate mining company named Philip Vecta. However, events transpired that forced some colonists out onto a barren wasteland world known as Helgen, named after a major company. The player is part of the Interplanetary Strategic Alliance, or ISA. While you naturally will think that the group the player is a part of has to be on the right side, it's actually completely the opposite. After Helgen decided that they wanted to purchase Vecta, the United Colonial Nations stepped in and called them out about unfair business practices. This led to many exiled colonists and to many casualties due to the harsh environment of their new home. This forced them to use air tanks and respirators to stay alive. The Witch's House Puzzle games. Let's talk about them. There doesn't have to be a good or bad affinity, but sometimes they will add it in just to give the player more of a reason to play it. The Witch's House is a free puzzle game from a Japanese game creator known as Fummy. The game has various cruel actions that the player must complete to progress, such as feeding a friendly frog to a snake, cutting the limbs off of a teddy bear, and exiting a beautiful flower. Not only that, if the player is doing a no-save run, and you cave and save in the witch's room, while all other save files will remain emotionless, in the no-save run save slot there will be a mild smile on Viola's face, and also the name is changed from Witch's Room to My Room. Bound by Flame Alright, alright, so this isn't quite a surprise that the player can become a bad guy in a fantasy RPG, but it's on this list, so deal with it. Bound by Flame was a game that had the player take control of a customized character with no name other than their pseudonym, Vulcan, who had fallen victim to demonic possession. This gave the player strength and magical powers. Sure, this game holds multiple endings, but the one that could shock the player is the demon ending, where you accept the demonic powers and become a full demon, allowing the player to destroy the world. Amnesia, Justine. Horror games are either a tropey mess or will make complete 180s on what the player thinks will happen. In the expansion pack, Amnesia Justine, the player controls Justine Florbell, a girl who cannot remember anything, not even her name. As the player continues the story, it's learned Justine was far from a kind person. From a young age, she had shown signs of being a narcissist and a psychopath. She enjoyed subjecting herself and others to torture techniques. She even blinded the three main antagonists, known as the suitors, so that she could believe her beauty was blinding, which was how her father described her mother before Justine murdered him. Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl Before Fallout took the leap into the first-person role-playing side of the gaming industry, there was Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl. The game put you in the shoes of Strelok, a man who cheated death with the help of two other stalkers after he was found in a crashed death truck. Now, 
Why is he a villain? Well, simply put, he was the main antagonist in the prequel game, Stalker Clear Sky. He had a desire to learn more about the Wish Granter, or more commonly called the Monolith, which is deep within the Chernobyl nuclear power plants. This led to the player having to chase him down all the way to the final fight. This final fight then puts in place the building blocks of Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Heavy Rain Heavy Rain is an experience that every gamer should have, told in the perspective of four people, all of which have their own backstory and just as likely a chance of being the infamous origami killer, which uses the long-lasting rain to drown his kidnapped victims, which are commonly children. The game is dramatic for the most part, but it was very dark and as soon as you really let it sink in that at one point you played as the origami killer, you will realize you were the bad guy, and he may have even been your favorite character out of the four protagonists. Spec Ops The Line Shooters are sometimes hard to pinpoint the morality of the character, mostly because once you get down to it, you're still murdering a number of people. While some of the deaths are justified with self-defense, other times you just can't claim self-defense. One such act of violence is the infamous white phosphorus section of the game. In the aftermath of this section, where you killed dozens of opposing soldiers, you had to trek through the area, watching as the soldiers were dying and screaming in agony. This isn't even mentioning the fact that Walker had accidentally killed over 40 civilians who were moved to the shelter. Later, it was found that John Conrad, the person Walker was attempting to rescue, the reason he managed to justify his actions, was actually dead after he failed to evacuate, and the stress of his actions led him to develop dissociative disorder, and any further communication to Conrad was just the player's imagination. Shadow of the Colossus Good video games immerse us in a world that can be as similar or as far-fetched as it wants to be from the real world. Shadow of the Colossus puts the player in the perspective of a boy simply known as Wander. He was tricked by the pseudo-antagonist Dorman. Wander's goals were noble. He wanted to resurrect a girl named Mono. To do so, he was tasked to track down and kill 16 Colossi who call the expansive, gorgeous land their home. However, after defeating all 16 Colossi, the player finds out that Dorman was simply an evil and powerful being that was separated into 16 fragments for an eternity long ago. This, however, was cut short due to Wander killing the 16 Colossi holding Dorman's power, who essentially aided the regeneration of a dangerous shadow entity to save a girl. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater We all have people who we look up to. Maybe it's a parent, maybe someone on TV, or maybe a mentor. For John, or Naked Snake, it was the boss. In Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, the player was given the mission to eliminate the boss. Naked Snake had accepted the job and reluctantly fought his mentor to the death. Afterward, he was given the nickname Big Boss and was awarded with a medal. The whole thing rattled him with guilt when he learned the truth that the whole operation was all a ploy. Braid The Ending in Regular Time Platforming games are commonly just a jump here and jump there, but there was something different about Braid. Maybe it's the time reversibility, and while sure, it was still a similar concept to Mario, a girl gets kidnapped and it's up to the player to save her, except it isn't that way at all. After all, context is key. While at the final stage, it seems like the antagonist was the man who seemed to have kidnapped the girl. That is simply not the case, however. The man who the player sees as the main antagonist is actually the hero of the story. Meanwhile, the player is actually seemingly the girl's stalker. Mark of the Ninja People love ninjas. I mean, they're pretty awesome. In Mark of the Ninja, the player takes on the role of an unnamed ninja as you play through stage after stage. What makes it apparent that you're a bad guy is at the ending of the game. The player will find themselves between two figures. One will lead to the player sacrificing himself, while the other will end with the character killing his mentor. Knights of the Old Republic Speaking of mentors, video games like to hide the player's past within the story, making the player want to continue playing so that they know what happened to cause the player to get their memory wiped or get amnesia. As you progress through the story of Knights of the Old Republic, that's exactly what you do. Playing as a Jedi who has no recollection of their past, the player will slowly build up more and more to remember. Finally, you encounter Sith Lord Darth Malak. As it turns out, you had your memory wiped, and not only that, you were once a Sith Lord. And not just any Sith Lord, you were the master of the main antagonist, Darth Malak. It's up to you what you want to do from that point, whether you give in to your inner dark side or continue on with the path of the good. Silent Hill 2 There's something about Silent Hill 2 that you simply can't hate. Maybe it's the genre-defining element of the game. Maybe it's the age of it. Maybe it's the blockiness of it. Or heck, if you're really into torturing yourself, maybe it's the tank controls. I don't know. I'm not going to judge you. 
In this game, you take control of James Sutherland, a husband who's in search of his long-since-dead wife, Mary, after somehow receiving a letter from her about how she was somewhere in Silent Hill. This, however, holds a darker tone to it as it found out that it wasn't a terminal disease that had killed Mary. It was an overburdened James, unable to take the responsibility. He smothered his wife to death and was bringing her to Silent Hill, either in the trunk or possibly in the back seat. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.